Coming up on Mountain News this morning, Senator Ram Paul sits down to discuss several topics impacting our region and the entire Commonwealth. And sports betting continues to be a topic of discussion in the state capitol as it is once again up for debate. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning to you. I'm Dakota Makris. It is six o'clock on your Friday morning. Good morning to you. I'm sure some of you all that are, you know, supposed to go to school or some of them are out today, Brandon. So lucky them that they get to sleep in. I forgot to mention that earlier. Yeah. So again, as people are getting up, closings and delays mm -hmm. on the bottom of your screen. And of course, always on WIMT.com. Yep. But uh, again, no weather today. It's a little cold out there. Might still be a few icy spots in spots this morning. But you see, as we take a look at I-75 at Corbin this morning, not a whole lot going on out there. So just be careful. Again, could be a few icy spots out there. But the active weather long gone. We had clouds for most of yesterday. That kept us from getting as warm as we had forecast. Only got into the mid to upper 30s this morning. Mid to upper 20s and low 30s out there. 32 Harlan Jacksboro and then 26 in Irvin. That is our range this morning. A lot of upper 20s. So a little extra on that coffee meter to max warming needed depending on your temperature tolerance this morning as we head out the door. And maybe you're grabbing a donut on your way out the door. The for, uh, next dozen hours looking pretty good as we clear the skies out completely. Temperatures though stay a little bit on the cooler side as a cold front passes by later today. Dakota. All right, Brendan, thank you. Businesses and local economies in our region still face a long road to recovery after the flood. Many jobs were lost, and now organizations are working to rebuild the workforce as well as these communities. As Chad Hedrick explains, these efforts are going hand in hand. The damage stretched for miles, uprooting thousands of lives and washing away memories, jobs, and communities. It's very uh, sad and it's very heart wrenching. The floods in eastern Kentucky left areas unrecognizable. Just over six months later, many neighborhoods and communities are still skeletons of what they used to be. Because, you know, here in eastern Kentucky, we pick up our bootstraps and we get to work and we fix things. And that's what we're doing right now. The Eastern Kentucky Concentrated Employment Program is working to not just get people back to work, but build back the economies and communities that were devastated. Hopes of building back quicker, sooner, better, and get these folks out of those uh, trailers and mobile homes. To do that, the construction firms and contractors need as many hands as possible. Thanks to a grant from the Department of Labor, EKCEP is working with contractors and businesses by connecting with people in skilled trades to repair and build homes. The grant covers wages for these jobs, jobs that people who lived in these areas have been eager to take after losing everything. We've seen several people that were impacted by the flood that are doing the flood recovery work. Uh, and um, so that has been rewarding as well. Rewarding to help already 130 people find work, many in the communities they love, and bringing them back to what they were. Chad Hedrick, WKYT. EKSEP is also conducting a survey to better determine the impacts on businesses and the workforce. This will help organizations and government officials figure out where to target resources and develop long-term strategies. Student enrollment numbers have varied across the region since the flood, but one school district is seeing a continual decrease. While Jenkins Independent Schools have had an increased amount of students in the recent years, Metro County School Superintendent Denise Yance says they are struggling to keep numbers up. With the decline in jobs, the COVID pandemic, and now the flood. Um, so our enrollment, we've lost uh, 500 kids in the last six, seven years. Yant says the she hopes the two grants they recently received will help get more students in the schools. Kentucky's junior Senator Ram Paul sat down with us Thursday morning. We asked him about topics ranging from COVID to flooding in eastern Kentucky. Here's what he had to say. President Joe Biden's administration plans to end the COVID-19 public health emergency on May 11th. Senator Rand Paul says he believes it should have never been issued. When you have a president, and this actually happened under both Biden and Trump, they both declared emergencies. I'm not really for that. I think the Congress comes together and votes on things. That's what happens in a representative democracy or a constitutional republic. Paul says the public health emergency added to the nation's debt. COVID is out there, but it's become over time less dangerous. Most people have had it. Most people have had a vaccine and or the disease or both. And so at this point in time, 
Um, you know, I think we're doing much better. and We don't need to be shutting the economy down. With the new session underway, he will be the Republican leader on the Senate Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee, which handles national security and government oversight issues. I have met with the Democrat chairman, though, and I'm trying to convince him that we should look at the origins of uh, COVID virus. I think it leaked from a lab in Wuhan. Six million, maybe some people estimate as much as 15 million people died worldwide. Closer to home, Paul says he was impressed with the state legislature's response to last summer's flooding. He says he believes the federal government should prioritize its money like the state. Frankly, I have a lot of people come up to me in eastern Kentucky as I travel and say, you know what? We'd rather money be spent here at home than send it to Ukraine. And it's not that I don't have sympathy, but my my responsibility is to the American people and to Kentucky. Looking forward to serving the country for years to come. Dakota Makris, WYMT Mountain News. Senator Powell says he believes the current inflation we are seeing could lead to a recession within the next year. Governor Andy Bashir recently announced the state will host a 14-stop tour as part of the Better Internet Initiative. The initiative's mission is to bring high-speed and reliable internet to underserved areas. The tour kicks off on Valentine's Day in Hopkinsville. In our region, the tour will make several stops. You can see those on your screen now. However, the exact locations of these stops are still unknown. They all go from 1 to 3 p.m., and you do need to register to attend. You can find a link to do that over on WYMT.com. Lawmakers return to Frankfurt next week to resume the 2023 legislative session. One subject that is up again for debate, sports betting. Since 2018, bills have introduced to legalize sports betting in Kentucky. Five years later, it still has not been legalized. Six of the seven surrounding states legalize sports betting, and Senate Majority Four Leader Damon Thayer says Kentucky thrives off horse racing, but we're still just a little behind. And we have a very long history and tradition of betting on horses here. I think this is just a natural extension of that. While he's unsure about the odds on House Bill 106's success, Senator Thayer says he thinks they have a better chance than last year. The Appalachian Pregnancy Care Center in Pikeville held its annual Give Life event Thursday evening, but it looked a bit different this year. The virtual event was hosted to raise money for APCC to help in its efforts to support mothers and women across Appalachia. Senator Philip Wheeler also came to the live event as well as a virtual appearance and remarks by Senator Rand Paul. Executive Director Kay Heyman says the decision to have a virtual event instead of the usual in-person banquet was mostly due to severe flooding in July of last year and it will ensure more money goes directly to helping women in the region. So this year with all the flooding, I just felt like that we really just probably couldn't do a live banquet, but we were able to raise, I just received another check, so we have raised $36,000. Woohoo! <laughs> Well, Hammond was thrilled to surpass the event's goal of raising $35,000 and says every bit will go to aid APCC with programs and other expenses. Students at a Madison County Elementary School are collecting Valentine cards not to exchange among each other, but to mail out to a loved one halfway around the world. Garrett Weimer and photojournalist Darnell Crenshaw have the heartfelt story. Inside Madison County's Silver Creek Elementary, you'll find Mrs. Perman's Valentine's Day project filled with a lot of love. Love for country. The bigger, I had to make it smaller than a like soldier right here. These love cards won't be shared with the class. Yeah, he got a big tank. Yeah. Just to try and get things out to soldiers who, like, don't who are away from their families. These three boys, Judah, Charlie, and Mason, are best friends with Ty. I think it's real cool that they're helping me out. There's 96 crayons over there, so there should be some. This is brotherly love because Ty's dad isn't close by. Uh, I think it's kind of hard for Ty because his dad is far, very far away, almost at the other side of the world. Ty's dad, Matt Pegram, is in the Navy, serving in the Middle East, and the entire school is making Valentine's cards and sending food to Matt and his unit overseas. I think he'll feel happy to know that we all care about him. Mrs. Perman thought Valentine's Day would be the perfect time for the entire school to show its appreciation. It can't help but warm his heart and the other soldiers' hearts to, to know that somebody halfway around the world still cares. 
And this sweet care package comes with a letter from Ty to his dad. Hi, Dad. I really miss you, and I really wish you were here right now. I just wanted to write you a letter. Your son, Ty Pico. Soon, Matt and his entire unit will feel the love all the way from the Middle East. In Madison County, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Well, if you'd like to add a card or a non-perishable item to Matt and his, uh, you have until until you still have some time. Silver Creek Elementary and Berea will be taking donations until the end of the week, so the items can be shipped out and received by Valentine's Day. Six ten here on this Friday morning, and thank goodness it's Friday. Let's take a look at UVA Wise over in Southwest Virginia. Camera online for now. I got the uh, football field lights on over there. It looks like this morning some clouds still over that way. Twenty seven in Southwest Virginia, twenty eight in Clintwood, thirty one Grundy, thirty in Jonesville, thirty two Harlan, thirty two Jacksboro. Those are our two warmest spots in the region. Down to twenty five now in Ashland. So that's our cold spot overtaking Irvin at twenty six. A lot of twenty starting to show up out there, and they're expected to continue to drop throughout the morning. Now behind that cold front, 15 in Indianapolis, 16 St. Louis, 18 in Springfield. So that colder shot of air is heading this way by tonight and we'll see your teens in our region overnight. But look on the other side of that front, 43 Charlotte, 46 in Myrtle Beach, 41 in Atlanta this morning. 30 by lunchtime or just after, I do think we'll stay in the low 30s for daytime highs, even with the sunshine, thanks to the passage of that cold front. Dakota? All right, Brendan, thank you so much. When we come back here on Mount News this morning, lawmakers meet with President Joe Biden to discuss renewed efforts to pass police reform legislation in the wake of the death of Tyree Nichols. Stay with us.